As the venues got bigger, it was up to the bands to provide the wattage to fill the sonic space. The louder you could get, the bigger the gigs you could play. You know, my 50 watt Marshall and Richie Blackmore's 30 watt Vox wasn't going to be what we needed. Especially when you got Hammond organ and Leslie's and stuff like that. We knew this had to be, this had to be kind of pushed up a notch. So I suggested we go and see Jim down at the factory, uh, which we did. And then we bought stacks for ourselves and, and started to build that reputation as the loudest band in the world. <laughs> Deep Purple pushed the Marshall amplifier to the limit and used its sonic power to brilliant effect. It was Blackmore's virtuosity and Law's classical leanings towards feeling in the gaps that Blackmore didn't that made Deep Purple sound so magnificent, so epic and so recognisable and inspired so many other people down the years. I'm still using right through this period the the direct injection Hammond organ, not going through Leslie speakers, going direct from the organ amplifier out into a, into a uh, Marshall 200 watt uh, to get that really hard, raw organ sound to compete with Richie. And that's the beauty of what Deep Purple had. There was a warmth to Richie Blackmore and John Lord in the way they competed and, and combined. And a lot of that was down to the way they used the Marshall amps. With the demand for higher volumes, in 1967, Marshall developed the Marshall 200, later known as the Marshall Major. This powerhouse pushed out 200 watts of raw energy, but only 1,200 were ever built. Deep Purple's Richie Blackmore and John Lord used adaptive majors to extraordinary effect, labeling them at the time as the loudest band in the world. What Marshall gave you when you went on stage, get that feeling of you're, you're, you're on the horse, you've got four horses in front of you and you're driving them as hard as you can. Lemmy was one of the first to use the Marshall not only for volume, but as a customised visual part of stage theatre with the psychedelic space band Hawkwind. The first one was Marsha, because the a -double -L went missing somehow. Somehow, so we had Marsha, and then we thought that was a very good idea. So and then the next one was No Morals, made out of the Marshall lettering. You know, we used to cut it up and make different names out of it. Guitar sounds, because they were so thick and big, you didn't need much more on, on the recording. You didn't need to now start putting hand claps and tambourines and things in there because the space wasn't there. The drum sound was a powerhouse, the guitar was a powerhouse, and the bottom end of the bass, what else did you need? You didn't need anything else. The actual sheer weight of air movement that made your trousers flap, you know, of, of everything happening on stage was just incredible. The way the Marshall amp sounds gives a unique opportunity to musicians to play their instruments in the way they want to, knowing it will actually be projected to everybody. That's what it was all about then, you know, we're a rock band. It's got to be loud, you know, and Slade were louder than us. Oh, really? Okay, well, we'll turn up then. You know, we used to tear audiences' heads off. We had about 34 cabinets on stage and uh, we used to call it the wall of death. And at our height, I mean, they were somewhere up there and you had to sort of reach up to try and adjust your volume. Not that it needed a lot of adjusting because it was flat out. By the early 70s, the Marshall amplifier was being adopted by other music genres. Virtuosos within the progressive rock movement began taking the Marshall harmonics to new levels. Les Paul, Marshall Stack, everything I wanted to do, everything I wanted to be. These days we talk about, you know, searching for the upper harmonic and all that, but in those days we were just going, my God, it's so alive, it's screaming. And I think, you know, guitarists are always looking for that slightly out of control thing. In the next episode, a wake up call. Punk arrived kind of in the nick of time.